Hello everyone and welcome back to my career let's play slash tutorial in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.3. In this episode we're going to send a probe to EVE because we've picked up uh, science data from Space Around EVE contract and it's basically an adaptation of our DUNA probe but I want to demonstrate one other thing that we didn't demonstrate with that DUNA probe and that is aero capture. And so we have a heat shield here to allow us to dip into EVE's atmosphere and get it to help us capture into orbit. And that is the additional trick we're going to be playing here. Overall, the probe is shorter than the Duna probe so that the heat shield properly protects the parts. Uh, in real life, uh, this would still be not particularly well protected. It should be more of a capsule shaped thing if you really want to make it legit. But in Kerbal Space Program, this is fine. Uh, so we're good, but because we put the heat shield here, we couldn't have the engine on this side. So you'll note that I've got the two ant engines here. They're actually attached to the probe core, and then I used the rotate tool and transform tool to tweak them out. And of course they have to be tilted out a little bit because of the dish. Now I'm not 100% sure that we've got enough uh, communication power here. Uh, we've got uh, this dish here, and then two of these antennae. Uh, Eve is technically closer to uh, Kerbin than Duna is, and uh, uh, even at its well, especially at its uh, furthest. So I'm hoping this is enough. Uh, we had four of these antennae on the Duna probe, but we'll see. And uh, it's relatively cheap, so if it goes wrong, we can uh, try again. And yep. Uh, so it's basically the same sort of setup. The rocket hasn't changed at all. And I just wanted to uh, show it doesn't have to be a very complicated rocket to do a simple mission uh, with uh, temperature, barometer, two goo containers. And we will see if this goes well. But first things first, we need to time warp to the correct timing. Uh, Kerbin to Eve transfer windows in 81 days according to Kerbin alarm clock and we can go into the tracking station and verify the phase angle uh, between Kerbin and Eve for transfer from Kerbin to Eve is minus 54 degrees which means backwards 54 degrees so we expect Eve to be around here in relation to Kerbin the 54 degree angle that ways. Remember Duna is supposed to be 45 degrees ahead and yeah uh, I'm still avoiding talking about how to calculate that, but because there are all these tools like Curve Alarm Clock to calculate that for you, and again, uh, you could go add uh, transfer window, and you can actually see the phase angle happening here. So Kerbin to Eve, you can see it tells you negative 54 degrees, and that the current is negative 95 degrees, and see how that changes over time. So given the tools. Uh, this is sufficient for now. Even if you knew the approximate way to calculate it, it's not accurate for all situations because of inclination and eccentricity of orbits. Okay, so SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. And off we go. Because EVE is closer to the sun, you don't have to worry as much about solar power. You'll get more solar power at EVE than normal. At Duna, you only get half what you get from Kerbin. At Joule, you get uh, 1 25th, I think it is. Well, that's at least that's what Jupiter is, and I think the ratio is the same. So, also at Mars, you get half what you get at Earth. Somebody in the comments on a video asked uh, about visual mods, I think, and I've just got stock visual enhancements. Um, which is environmental vision enhancements. So I did a video earlier on in the series about how to install that. This is definitely not the best you can get Kerbin to look, by the way. Now, uh, Delta V is reading incorrectly because we've got the ant engines reversed on the upper, the probe stage. That's not actually what I want to separate. I want to separate the upper fairings. Okay, let's get rid of those. Okay, and separation. So again, just for looks, I had, I had a fairing piece 
in order to make an interstage fairing so that we didn't have the smaller uh, fairing for this stage showing. That's extra mass for just aesthetic reasons, but I decided to go with it. This stage, as you can see, has 1,683, so we're ultimately going to have to use the probe zone fuel for finishing everything off, which is fine because we're expecting to capture into EVE orbit using that heat shield and not using much fuel for that. That's the expectation, that's not a guarantee. There is a mod called Trajectories that would help you plan out your aero capture. In other words, figuring out how deep into the atmosphere you need to dip in order to make sure you get into orbit around Eve or Duna or uh, Jewel is another possibility. Though with Jewel, uh, using aero capture is not the easiest way to make sure you get into orbit. More on that in a future episode. Now these extended will not be protected by the heat shield and that's a question mark for me. For a lot of these missions I have my own little uh, doubts and question marks. I'm wondering how certain things will shape up and one is the, the whole mainly what I've been wondering about is the communication situation. So for now we need to talk about how to transfer to Eve which is a little bit different than Duna because we're going to an inner planet inside uh, Kerbin's orbit and that means we need to line up our trajectory with the where Kerbin was basically uh, going backwards along Kerbin's orbit so we're going to make the maneuver node here and then we're going to boost up from there this is just like uh, returning from the moon or Minmus same idea and that makes sense because when you do that you're trying to get to something within the moon or Minmus orbit and the same is true in this case we're trying to get to something within Kerbin's orbit and that's why we're doing it in this direction. EVE is a little bit complicated too because it's got a little bit of an inclination and changing your inclination close to the Sun is not that efficient. So let's see what we can do. Well, one thing we can do is actually approach at that descending node. And the downside of that is you're going to be going faster. Remember, the Hohmann trajectory means that you meet it over here, and that will be the slowest approach, which means you have to take the least effort to slow down. Um, if you encounter it over here, you're not going along with Eve's own movement around the sun, and so you're going to have a lot of ex excess velocity and that excess velocity has to burn off somehow. Now if you're aero capturing, what that means is you're going to have to dip lower in the atmosphere in order to get captured. If you're actually using your engine to get into orbit around your target planet, that means that you're going to have to use more delta V. So trying for this sort of encounter over here because you don't want to make an extra mid-course adjustment potentially, uh, is only really good if you're using a heat shield. Uh, if you're using a heat shield and trying to do an aero capture then this is probably not that big a deal because you're carrying the heat shield anyway, you're not carrying any additional mass to make this happen. So it's more convenient. Now there's a little bit of a difference here. You can see I want to meet up with it at the descending node because that's where our outbound orbit will cross its orbit. But uh, there's a gap there. There's two ways of fixing that. Remember, there's the radial burn thing, which is shifting time. You don't actually do a radial burn. And you can see shifting time, which actually shifts where the maneuver happens in our orbit here, has a pretty good effect. And in fact, there's our encounter right there. It takes 1,231 meters per second, which we technically have. We have 600 in the probe and 1,030 in the current stage. Um, though that's deceptive now because I didn't have a decoupler over here so the probe doesn't really have 600 because we're gonna have that attached to us right up till um, we jettison the heat shield if we need to. So that's a bit more complicated. So the little ant engines are pushing around the empty tank and the spark engine for a while. So we can do it that way that's one option but 
another option is to just do a mid-course adjustment. So that costs less upfront, or actually we could wait until there. At any point along this orbit up to the Holman, up to right around there, we could probably figure out how to encounter Eve. So this burn takes less upfront, 200 meters per second less, but over here we're going to have to correct our orbit and we're not really getting an encounter there that's a huge gap but that correction takes 335.6 meters per second so the upside of this if we can actually narrow that is that um, we're not going to have to take as much delta V to make orbit around EVE but again we're doing aero capture so that's not important uh, in theory so but if you were using your own propellant in order to capture around Eve, then you would want to uh, just spend a little bit more up front like this in order to reduce the speed once you get there. An extra 100 meters per second here isn't too bad. The amount of delta V you need to catch around Eve can be quite severe. It's not as bad as Moho, but still. Moho can take thousands of meters per second of delta V to capture around, so... Or am I thinking of Mercury? I might be confusing too. It still takes a lot to capture around Moho. So let's say we were trying to do this. Why? Uh, how do I fix this? Well, again, it's just shifting time. You can see if I shift time here, we get our encounter. Okay? So you, uh, shifting time, again, is just uh, picking this up. You don't need the maneuver node editor. It's just picking this up and moving it along the orbit like this. It so happens that using this is a little bit more precise. You can shift it by a second by second. Actually, you could probably shift it by second by second like this too. You can see it's just one second at a time there. So it's not that imprecise. But that's all you're doing. And it's the difference between getting an encounter and knocking an encounter. You can spend all your time trying to change prograde and do all sorts of things, but if you haven't got the maneuver in the right location, you're not going to get your encounter. So we can do this too. That's not too bad. I don't know which one I want to demonstrate more. Uh, it's a good question. Mm, let's just go with the simpler one. Uh, which means the one that we'll encounter right at the right at the ascending node or descending node. That's also sort of an off-plane transfer, which I've shown with Min uh, Minmus as well. But it does mean that whatever altitude I air break at Eve with, you will get different results if you're not on a quick transfer like this. Let's just take a look at how much delta V it would take to make orbit around Eve given this sort of transfer. First of all, you can see where it is, and that's... Wait, well, I don't... Oh, that's probably just zero. We're going to tweak that so it's closer. And we got to shift time by one second at a time to see the effect. It's pretty clear that we're getting close to just spending the same amount as we do with the mid-course adjustment if we really want to get in line, but uh, we're not touching the normal burn, so we can just add a little bit of normal component like that, and maybe undo some of the shift time stuff I was doing. Okay, so there we have an interesting approach. And if we were going to use propellant in order to make orbit, how much would that cost? Actually, a polar approach is not necessarily a bad thing. And technically, we would want to approach... Well, it depends on where Kerbin is at the time. We'll, we'll figure that out once we get there. But uh, here, 161, let's check the atmospheric altitude of EVE. That's 90 kilometers. And add that, along, add that uh, maneuver. And let's see, how much does it take to make orbit? 1,432. And if we really wanted a loose orbit, we could get away with just a thousand maybe. And if we want to get a really tight orbit, that's 
that's 2,000 meters per second. So it's clear why you might want to use a heat shield instead of carrying all the propellant. The heat shield is much lighter. The trick is figuring out what altitude would be good to enter Eve's atmosphere. And we're going to test that out in this episode. I, I don't have any number. Uh, I could have looked up a number, but I diff didn't want to. I decided that I would just go with trying it out and seeing what happens. And it's going to be doubly interesting because I don't have the decoupler between these two. So we're going to end up uh, using this tank to shield us initially. Let's just go with this plan and see what happens. So again, uh, to get into orbit around EVE, it would take less than what I have here, less than that 2000 to get into a low orbit, if you were going on a normal Hohmann transfer. So we see that stage time is 1 minute and 25 seconds. That'll do most of the maneuver. And again, because tweaking the timing of the maneuver adjusts where you're going to end up uh, where are you going to end up, whether you're going to have a huge gap to EVE or no gap at all. Trying to get this timing right is sort of important. I'm going to start now. And let's see if it works. If, if that timing is correct, we should be halfway through the burn or at 600 meters per second when node is at T minus zero. And it looks like I was early. Not that early though, you can see about three seconds early. Now here's a trick. Uh, the engines on this part are backwards, so uh, shut down. Uh, oh, there is a decoupler. I take it back. Crisis averted. Um, oh, that's the right decoupler. Okay, we have a decoupler. I just didn't see it. Nope, th that's the wrong way. Okay, so we can't have... Uh oh, we got to bump into it. Um, we're going to have to actually manually turn this to the opposite direction. Knock that away. Okay, and SAS please. We could have had a backwards facing controller, but that would take more mass. But that is an option. You could just have a backward facing controller. And I could just tell it to go retrograde, which is close enough. But I think there's some radio component, so tilt up a little bit. And always good to take a look at what's actually going on at this point. You can see our resulting orbit in orange there. Well, I'm not seeing an encounter, let's see. Okay, that's the closest approach distance, and it's going down, okay. And there's an encounter. Let's see what it actually looks like. Seems in line. Oh, it's a little bit high. I wonder which side would help us bring it down. That doesn't seem to. No, that's worse. Okay, maybe this side. Well, that's obviously high, so we're going to end up doing a mid-course adjustment anyway. But at least we've got our encounter set up. So halfway through, and we're encountering it in 108 days, so let's just say 44 days is fine. And we're going to use Maneuver Node Editor to make sure that it's precise and I don't have to pull the handles. Though, if you want to uh, pull the little handles, that's fine too. And it'll take just uh, 11 meters per second to correct this. And I sort of want it to be polar. No particular reason in this case, but... Might not even be the best thing. And we are trying to dip into the atmosphere with this, so... 92 kilometers is the start. That's right above the atmosphere. Okay, well, it's got its maneuver. I guess we'll just go out here in time warp. 
Okay, we are approaching the mid-course adjustment and we are going to continue in the art of executing maneuver nodes backwards. So, let's just take a look at where this node is. It's basically at uh, zero pitch, and maybe a pitch of degree of one. And right now the heading is, we could actually have MechJeb show us what our heading number is, but I'd say it's about 170 something, maybe 172, somewhere around there, possibly 175, but let's say 172. And so what we really need is 172 plus 180, 180 degrees being the opposite, uh, so 352, and basically on the horizon. So we're going to go 352. It's a little bit of a hassle, but it saves you from carrying the extra probe core facing the correct way or I mean I guess you could build everything around a probe core on the launcher and then ditch that and then have everything be backwards with this but it's up to you so basically we need to do the burn in this direction four minutes is not too far off considering we're uh, talking about a journey of a hundred days Okay, let's see what the result was. Uh, we're crashing into Eve, <laughs> so pretty precise. Let's back off a little bit. Okay, that'll do. And then once we get there, we'll uh, adjust how low we go. Too low and we're gonna be brought into a landing which when you think about it may, might not be the worst thing except we don't have any parachutes so the landing will be pretty rough. Um, too high of course we don't get captured which also isn't the worst thing. Um, it just means that we're not going to be hanging around EVE, but the contract never said anything about making orbit anyway. Making orbit is a bonus. So either way, we'll be able to transmit data, but we have a better chance of transmitting data if we keep it in orbit or have it fly, just fly by than if we have it crash into the ground. Crash into the ground, it might be the case that we don't have communication with Kerbin while we're you know having our encounter and we will just lose the data so if we just have it fly by on the other hand we could transmit it when it finally regains communication so we're going to try and shade a little bit high and make sure we're not dipping too deep into Eve's atmosphere and if it turns out that we don't capture we don't capture But again, I don't. I'm used to realism overhaul. I don't know what altitude is right for Eve. Now it sure looks like this approach brings us on the wrong side of Eve, right? We can see Kerbin is there, and this is going on the opposite side. I don't want to lose communication during this. So how much would it take for me to go on the opposite side of Eve? So negative radial. Now this periapsis is still going to be somewhat on the opposite side. We'll have communication, you know, it's pr pretty much just as bad. We'll lose communication here, in this case. Coming around this way, we're going to lose communication, like, uh, let's say, I mean, if Kerbin's over here, you can imagine we'll lose communication around here anyway. So I guess it's probably just as bad either way. Okay, and uh, so we'll just leave it as it is. We'll go prograde and we need to dip it into the atmosphere a little bit more. It's only at 88 kilometers right now. And again, trajectories, what it'll do is, uh, depending on what, what your periapsis is, it'll calculate whether you get into orbit or what kind of trajectory you would have after aero braking. That's the goal of the mod. Now, I don't have that in here right now but maybe uh, sometime later I'll demonstrate it. Uh, let's just double check how much delta V it would take to get into orbit. 
just a very loose orbit would take about a thousand a little bit more than initially thought 1050 I'm gonna go with 78 kilometers maybe that seems too high though it's only 12 kilometers into Eve's atmosphere but Eve's atmosphere is very dense this is an important piece of information its surface pressure is like I think 40 uh, something like that 40 am uh, well it says atmospheric pressure 5 atmospheres but oh maybe again mixing up with Venus but anyway atmospheric pressure 5 atmospheres 5 times that a Kerbin so it's got a much thicker atmosphere and it's at sea level gravity this is important too it is 1.7 times the gravity of Kerbin so if you're going to put something on the surface of Eve you're gonna have a heck of a time getting it back up again you're gonna be facing a very thick atmosphere and more gravity so keep that in mind before accidentally stranding ker ker kerbals on Eve or even probes uh, but yeah 78 let's try 75 that's a nice round number to work with easy to remember okay so what will happen on this approach remember it's not a regular home and transfer if we go to 75 kilometers I'm not quick saving we're just gonna do it once and we'll take the results as they come we still have communication signal strength 77 percent now these are going to have to go away so let me just retract this antenna that gives us 70 percent well yeah let me just try and oh uh, you know we we are already in eve territory let's fill the contract log temperature and uh transmit data it automatically extends that anyway um yep that's fulfilled let's do the barometer and everything log pressure data transmit and goo transmit but we're waiting for the low over eve data but now i, I feel comfortable about uh retracting these we've basically fulfilled the contract so everything else is bonus and we've still got signal strength so it's okay 54 percent though we should take a look at where Kerbin and Eve are in relation to each other you can see that they're basically next to each other it will not be such a good signal if they were on opposite sides of the Sun from each other this is basically the best communication we can get so yeah it just gets worse from here so don't plan necessarily on this antenna arrangement with two of these and one of those to always work around Eve Eve does have a tiny little moon called Gilly which is cute and while somewhat awkward to get to I'll demonstrate that in another episode uh, is lucrative as far as science is concerned okay Eve the purple planet prograde is not good uh, in this case it is retrograde that we want because it doesn't matter where our thrusters are and actually surface negative relative velocity because when it comes to the atmosphere uh, the atmosphere goes along with the surface it's not uh, arbitrary orbital coordinates so uh, surface negative relative velocity is the same as retrograde it's just with respect to the surface instead of res with respect to orbit remember the surface is rotating because planets rotating and that can change things if you're at an inclination okay we are in the atmosphere oh things are heating up already heat shield definitely heating up we've got ablation
Are we going to slow down enough, though? That's the question. It's all very dramatic. Because of the plasma, we lose communication anyway. That's 75 kilometers. We've still got a negative apoapsis, which means we are not in orbit yet. Also, infinite orbital period is sort of a tip-off, so though sometimes it tries to calculate that and comes up with some weird number. Okay, well on this uh, faster transfer, we did not make orbit on this pass. And we used uh, not quite half of our ablator, about 40%. And we are out of the atmosphere now. Though we don't have communication, well, it's actually because EVE itself is blocking us. I should have gotten low altitude uh, science before we entered the atmosphere. That would have been much smarter. Oh well. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get the low, low altitude one this time. So this is going to be flung out, I think. The 341 meters per second we have left is not going to be enough. We now have communication. There's no way this is low over EVE. Let's see though. Yeah, it's high over EVE. Okay, so that didn't work very well. And maybe it would have worked if we were on the regular Holman transfer. But again, we were approaching very fast compared to usual. And that might not have been the most helpful situation. This probe is now in interplanetary space, or will be, and it's at this weird inclination because Eve, we, we pass over Eve with this inclination here, 114 degrees, which means somewhat retrograde around Eve, actually. And because of that, because of Eve's influence, we've been tossed into this inclined orbit, which basically means this, this probe is not going to be doing much useful science I don't think except we could probably do science around the Sun if we haven't done it already let's see let's just get out of Eve SOI sphere of influence and see what we can do so you'll have to do your own testing about what altitudes are good I would have to do my own testing to be sure and the testing okay so we haven't done goo around the Sun like this yet so let's just transmit that 4.3 science and we should extend the other antennae as well. Um, the altitude you need in order to aerial capture depends on the area of the heat shield and how much mass is on it. So there is a number called ballistic coefficient, which is uh, how much mass per meter squared of heat shield area you've got. So if we want to take a look at that, this is a 1.25 meter diameter heat shield, which means 0.625 meter radius and then we square that and we multiply it by pi and we find out that the area of the heat shield is 1.22 meters cu uh, meter squared and the vessel mass is 0.921 tons and so the heat shield loading is 0.75 tons per meter squared and so that's a number that you use as a reference and you say, okay, well, if something's going to be uh, lighter than that, it has less of a heat shield loading, you want to go higher in the atmosphere in order to capture. If it's heavier than that, more heat shield loading, more ballistic coefficient, more mass on a particular area of heat shield, you need to go lower in the atmosphere. So those that you're going to have to work out, or you use trajectories to do the work for you and hope that it's correct. But uh, basically, you can just jot down some numbers as reference. Uh, it's fun to test. I mean, as far as uh, things that are dramatic in Kerbal Space Program, aerial captures are pretty darn dramatic. Anytime you're passing through the atmosphere at those kinds of speeds, you know, it didn't take very long. It did, we didn't spend much time in Eve's atmosphere. So anytime you're uh, doing aerial captures, it can be sort of fun doing the tests. And of course, you get the benefit of quick saving and quick loading. You don't have to relaunch the mission every time. So you just uh, quick save before passing into the atmosphere and then just pass through it a few times. And if you're an intrepid streamer, you will uh, take bets 
as to whether the probe will explode this time or not, or what will happen with it, and stuff like that. We've done the temperature scan, I'm sure we've done the barometer already. Okay, anyway, that is what I will go with as our introduction to aero captures this time around. I didn't actually capture, but uh, I hope it was instructive. And we've gotten our contract around EVE fulfilled. I demonstrate how to transfer to EVE, various options as far as how to meet up with EVE. Uh, a more normal, slower way down here, but uh, we ended up with the quicker way. Uh, trying to meet up with it at the ascending or descending node and that turned out not so well for us because we didn't capture into orbit but maybe it's better just to wait for a EVE orbit contract for that anyway so that we get some money out of it. Okay on that note thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.